In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to import and place IDML documents in Affinity Publisher. We're going to look at substituting missing fonts as well as relinking missing resources. When saving a document in Adobe InDesign, you'll need to use the format CS4 or later IDML. This will ensure that the document is saved as an IDML. So to begin with, I'll go to my finder and we'll locate an IDML document. I could simply right click, go open with and choose Affinity Publisher 2, but instead I'm simply going to click drag the file into Publisher. Once the document is opened, I can see a notification window warning me that the document contains missing fonts. So I'll click on the notification window and open the Fonts Manager. We can see here that the document uses a font that isn't installed on this computer. These fonts are labelled as missing. The Fonts Manager will allow us to substitute this font with a replacement so we can still read the text used within the document. So I can use these drop down menus here to select a replacement font. We'll go ahead and choose Arial and we'll keep this regular. As all of the other fonts are present within the document, I'll go ahead and click Close. And we can see that the document structure of the IDML has been brought through into Affinity Publisher. We start off in construction mode and this means we can see our grids, guides and margins. We can toggle preview mode on or off by simply clicking this option here on the context toolbar. I'll close down this document now and we'll move on to a slightly more complicated example. I'll once again go up to my file explorer and this time I'm going to locate a fashion magazine and I'll simply right click, open with Affinity Publisher 2. Now when importing IDML files, you may come across this issue. The missing linked resources are actually included as part of the template, but when they were added into the original document, absolute file paths were used rather than relative file paths. As a result, Affinity Publisher cannot locate these files. So to locate and relink these files, we'll go ahead and click yes. We'll then be prompted to browse and locate missing resources. And we're looking for portrait 3083402JPEG. So we'll go to our master folder again, up to our fashion file and access the links folder. I'll scroll down and we'll select the missing image. I'll then choose open. Now, depending on how scattered around your original linked resources were, we may need to locate several files. So for this example now, we need to find a barcode PNG file, which would have originally been stored in an entirely different folder. So we can simply find the barcode file here. And once again, we'll click open. In some scenarios, there may be resources that are no longer used in the final design, but are still linked or referenced to in the file. In this particular template, some of the images have been included outside the main spread, clearly not being used in the final design. Now, as they're not included in the template, we can't download them, which means we'll have to go ahead here and click cancel. We have an image policy prompt here, asking whether we'd like to link our images rather than embed them to reduce the document size. For this example, I'll go ahead and click yes. Affinity Publisher will then locate the rest of the missing resources and render the final document. Once the document has loaded, we can quickly browse through and see that the document structure has been brought through completely intact. If we also scroll down, we'll see some missing resources that were outside of the main spread. These are the image files that were not included in the template download. So we'll quickly go to our move tool and just tidy these images up by deleting them. As we saw in the previous design, we're currently in construction mode and we can once again go to our toolbar and turn on preview mode to see the final design layout. Finally, I'll look at importing an IDML document by using the auto flow function. So to begin with, I'll create a new document. I'll then go ahead and draw out a new picture frame using the picture frame tool. And then I'll place my IDML content by using the place images tool. I'll locate my content and choose open. The IDML will appear in the place images panel. And I can simply select a specific page by going to this drop down here, or I can expand the file and select a range of pages. I can then simply click over the document view onto the page into the first available picture frame. 
Publisher will then automatically flow the remaining content onto the new pages, automatically populating the document. And there we go, that was how to place, import and autoflow IDMLs into Affinity Publisher. Thank you for watching.